when a child is in school around these parts, a lot of flyers come home. At least three, I would say, are sports flyers trying to recruit kids into their program. And so you might get a flyer that says, try tennis for $59, or it's time to sign up for SYSA Spring Baseball. The flyer that caught our son Owen's eye when he was six years old, he was just a, an innocent kindergartner coming home with these flyers, and he, he was drawn to so many of them, but one especially. Around this time of year, if I remember right, it was this yellow flyer, and it said, it's time to wrestle. <laughs> it was time to sign up to join the wrestling league, and Owen was interested. Now, Owen, we, we still do not know what drew him to this particular flyer. We don't come from a family of wrestlers. In fact, he and his older brother didn't even wrestle when they were little. The closest they got to wrestling was a tickle fight. So we signed him up for wrestling. And uh, I remember his very first wrestling match, there's a weigh-in. He had his little singlet on and he was standing there on that scale and he was 39 pounds. <laughs> 39 pounds of pure awesomeness. Now, wrestling did not turn out to be Owen's thing. We were so proud of him for trying. But I am grateful to, for the opportunity to have had my eyes opened to a sport that I had never watched before. In this sport, I was so impressed with the courage it took for these opponents to face off and then plunge at each other with their, their full body weight, all 39 pounds. <laughs> I mean, it really took courage. I was just in a conversation. Well, actually, I was overhearing another conversation. And this man was telling someone about his experience as a wrestler. He said that he came from generations of wrestlers. And so it was just natural that he should wrestle. So his, his parents, of course, got him into a program probably when he was six years old. And he says, uh, he, he was very serious about wrestling. He ended up wrestling all the way through college. But had, at his very first match, he was standing off, you know, in ready position against his opponent. And the ref said, wrestle. And he turned around and ran the other direction. <laughs> I mean, it takes guts to wrestle. You realize that at your first match. We are two weeks into a sermon series on Habakkuk. And this is a book that uh, has Habakkuk dealing with a lot of hard questions about God and kind of throwing questions God's way again and again. Habakkuk is such an uncommon book to teach or preach on, but I'm enjoying getting to know more about this prophet. So I did have to look up, what does the name Habakkuk mean? What's the root word? I'm always curious about names, especially in the Old Testament. And when I looked it up, it says that the Hebrew root of Habakkuk is the word for embrace or wrestle. It can be interpreted as wrestler Habakkuk. That's what the name means, which is such an apt name. Because Habakkuk wrestles with God. That's what the whole book is about. We already saw uh, round one of it last week in worship when we read the scripture reading. So Habakkuk starts out, God calls him into the ring, and he starts out saying, How long, O Lord? How long will you let us suffer? How long is this going to go on? Why, God? Why, God? are the righteous being swallowed up and surrounded by the wicked? And then God answers. There's a real match going on. God says, you know what? I realize this is going on. I know that the righteous are being swallowed up by the wicked. And here's this, Habakkuk. I am using the wicked as an instrument 
for my judgment. So here's this country, uh, this nation of Israel, that is going to be swallowed up by the enemy. There's this impending war and takeover going to happen, and God is going to use that for judgment. So that's round one. Habakkuk comes back. Round two. There should be a ding-ding here. (laughs) Round two. And this is the scripture reading that was read today. Habakkuk says, God, why would you use the wicked as an instrument for your judgment? That makes no sense because you, your eyes are too pure to look on this kind of thing. You cannot be associated. You can't be a partner with the wicked, right? And so here's Habakkuk. He throws that back into God's faith, face and then he says, I'm going to stand at my watch post and wait for you to answer. That's the beginning of Habakkuk chapter 2. I will stand at my watch post and wait because I'm not going to let you get away with this. I am not going to let you run from this important question. Habakkuk, as a prophet, was called by God because he was a wrestler. Habakkuk was here to show us something very important about our faith. That when the going gets rough, when a crisis comes about, when instability in life comes our way, we are not supposed to run from it. We are supposed to stay in the match and wrestle. It is tempting to run the other way. And I'm not talking about becoming an atheist when times get rough, although some people do. I'm talking about the people of God, what we do with our faith when crisis comes about. When we read the news and see that the world is in a shambles, what do we do as people of faith? Do we ignore the news? Just say, I'm just going to stop reading this. I need to just read my Bible and work on my personal relationship with Jesus here. Because the world, it doesn't make any sense. Ignoring the pain of the world or pretending that it's not as bad as it is is another form of running the other way. We are called to stay in the match and wrestle. Now, Habakkuk was not the first wrestler in Scripture. You might remember this story in Genesis, where Jacob, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham, Jacob was on his way to deal with some reconciliation issues he had with his brother Esau. He was, he was going to his brother, living in fear, wondering if he was, this was going to be the end of him. He was on this journey when in the middle of the night, there was a man that wrestled with Jacob until daybreak. We later learn that this man was a messenger, an angel from God, perhaps even the very embodiment of God, wrestling with Jacob himself. The amazing thing was that Jacob held his own against this divine wrestler. He held on until daybreak. In fact, the famous line from this story, I love it, Jacob says, I will not let go until you bless me. I will not let go unless you bless me. And he held on until daybreak. And because of that, God said to Jacob, you are no longer going to be called Jacob. You will be called Yisrael, which means 
the one who strives with God. The one who hangs on, the one who wrestles with God. That's what the name Israel means. Jacob was going to hold on until he got his blessing, until he had this new understanding of God and the world. Just like Habakkuk would years later, hold on and wrestle and not let go until God gave an answer. Maybe Habakkuk was called because Israel as a people needed to remember their true identity. That when a crisis came about, they were not to run away. They were not to try to find their own meaning and abandon their idea of who God was and and their own identity as God's people. No, they were named wrestlers. They were named the ones who strive with God. Habakkuk was sent by God. Habakkuk, wrestler, sent by God to remind Israel that they also were wrestlers. That they also had every right to say to God, I will not let go unless you bless me. Four years ago, we had a confirmation service right here in this sanctuary, similar to the confirmation service that is going to be right after this sermon. Today, four high schoolers will stand and make a public profession of faith. Say that I believe in Jesus Christ as the one who saves. Well, four years ago, it was similar. The service was very similar to the one that you will see today. Except the circumstances were very different. Three weeks before the confirmation service, one of the girls in the youth group, who was a classmate with the confirmation students, took her own life. She died of suicide after a somewhat private struggle with depression. And these students were left wondering, where is God? What's going on? Katie Stark, who was the director of youth ministries at the time, Katie and I had this conversation, what should we do? How, this was the very point in confirmation in which we were going to ask these students to write statements of faith and say what they believed about God, the goodness of God in the world. We wondered if we should postpone confirmation, put it off another few months, let these kids grieve and, and try to deal with all of these questions that they had. In the end, we decided we would give them a choice as it it always is a choice. Faith is is a choice you make. We weren't going to make them do anything, but we said, you have the choice. You can go through with confirmation, make a public profession of faith, write a statement that is just true to what you are experiencing right now. Be as honest as you want to be. And if you would rather wait, you can wait. Mallory Anzavino, who is now a freshman at the University of Washington, wrote a statement that I feel like captures this wrestling. And so I asked her if I could share it again in worship with you today. And she said yes. So here's what Mallory wrote. I don't know why bad things happen. I don't know why the world is so broken. I don't know how God watches over us all at once. I don't know if God hears all of my prayers. I don't know about the theory of evolution. I don't know if all the Bible stories are 100% correct. 
I don't know why people feel so much pain. I don't know why my best friend is gone. I don't know if God really has a plan. I don't know if there really is a hell. I don't know if anyone gets turned away from heaven. I don't know why there is so much hate. I don't know why there are different religions. I don't know how it all started. I don't know how God made everything. I don't know how God can forgive again and again. I don't know if God feels pain. I don't know why there are mental disorders. I don't know why people can't be happy. I don't know why the people we love most are sometimes taken from us. I don't know why there is suicide. I don't know if God is a boy or a girl. I don't know if God is always with me. I don't know what heaven is like. I don't know what angels are like. I don't know why humans are so intricate. I don't know why I sometimes get the feeling that I've seen something before. I don't know where God is, but I do know one thing, that Jesus Christ died on the cross to take away my sins and save me, and that I want to be with God for the rest of eternity. I think that's all I need to know. Faith in its most pure form, is a wrestling. It's an engagement. It's an embrace with the God who gave us life. And the amazing thing is that in that moment of holding on, we recognize what the God is like to whom we're holding on to. We recognize that this is the God who came down to us that did not turn tail and run when things got bad. This is a God who came all the way into the ring with us, gave his life on the cross, and is holding on to us now and saying, I will not let go. Amen.